I had different plans to make a different video to finish off after the um, Max Egan and um, Gunnam one with the Nightcap community. I was just going to sum up Max Egan and then uh, leave it off that for a bit while other stuff uh, came together. But uh, Shane, thank you very much for the message that you left. He actually said that, um, you know, he heard that, well, you can read the message. I won't read it out. It's on the comment. And one thing, Shane, too, I, I am sorry when I said it couldn't be that easy because I have finally come across Gillian Linda Norman's uh, sites that she's currently got and uh, I can see that it has been far from easy for over a decade for so many people and the problem that just changes from one to another and it's all in the same area surrounding the same kind of people and ambitions and you know so um I understand now why you said, ha ha, it couldn't be that easy. No, it hasn't been. So that was a pretty flippant thing to say. From my perspective, it did seem easy because I've only just started bringing all of this out because, it, you know, this is just all so sus. And, uh, you know, whether I was right or wrong, I felt enough about what I was looking at was right to actually share my opinion with others and then leave it up to others whether they felt that way or not so thank you Shane because um, it completely completely changed what I was going to do and uh, also means that uh, well in a lot of ways this may have been finished with um, a, a people that have just bought into it you know, I'm really sorry, but your money's gone and you're not ever going to sit back and you're never going to get to be able to build on that land. And I'll show you why in a minute. Thank you again, Shane. Because basically, Shane, um, in finding Linda's... Uh, and I keep calling her Linda because she's got G.I. Linda and it just seems like it's an army name. Yeah, so um, Gillian Norman. Anyway, hang on a sec. So I did the search on um, Nightcap Village Development Sunday Telegraph because that's where Shane said it was. And it did come up with that link, which took me to that. I don't have a subscription and I'm not going to open it up because, you know, if I can't find the information for free, I mean, if people want to charge me for something, it's like, well... <laughs> Sorry, I'm not paying for information. And really, people that are p charging you for information are motivated to give you information that you might want to pay for rather than the truth or what you want to hear. So, well, we all know that about the media anyway, don't we? So, um, then this other one came up, which um, there is a um, YouTube... Where is it? Um, Tyler Tolman if you go to his YouTube you'll actually see pretty much that same image oh not Tyler Tolman sorry Pete Evans well they are kind of the same um, you know they are sort of they've both been involved but uh, yeah sorry to me I said to my daughter today can you come round and have a look at this guy because I swear I know his face. I've se I've met this guy. I know his face. But um, I met also someone at the community I was um, living at there for a while. She was supposed to be some world international famous chef and she cooked up this vegan crap that seriously the dog wouldn't even eat. You know, well, I suppose dogs are carnivorous, so vegan crap. But I mean, the kids, I mean, you know, my kids weren't the only ones there. They all turned their nose up at it. 
you know. I mean, they'd much rather eat cardboard because that actually had more flavour. I couldn't believe that she's a world-class chef. It's like, seriously, if that's all it takes, wow, I could become world-class too. But anyway, I'm getting off subject here as usual. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I don't know, he's the chef, yeah, he's the celebrity chef. I mean, to me, he's, he's nobody. I've heard his name mentioned quite a few times, but, you know, if he's the guy I think I've met, yeah, okay, I can understand why Julian Norman and others don't like him and others in the community. Now, um, yes, I did that first one and it wouldn't give me anything else that I didn't have to pay for. So I thought, oh, well, I'll modify my search a bit and I went for um, Nightcap Village Development Tweed to see if it would bring up anything about the council decision. And that's when it started bringing me up all these ones about Nightca Nightcap Nightmare blog and all of these other things. And it was like, what? Now, I did bring up, I opened up all these tabs and the majority of them were clearly the blogs that were made that the court ruled to be um, removed. So they were removed. But the ones that weren't removed, wow. Guess where Gillian Norman has ended up? Hang on, I'll just take you up to the top. Nightmare on Mingimble, edited by G.I. Linda. She's also got a um, blog. She's, um, why is that like that? Where's her little thing? She's a journalist. Um, here, here we go. She's, um, you know, my image of her as an age pensioner. You know, she's still a vibrant woman. You know, I, the, the image was a lot more different. But still, it doesn't detract from the fact that um, what's been done to her and to many others, because she is sharing their story in here. And I tell you what, um, she has been keeping on this because she lives in Mount Burrell right where these people are trying to ruin her home and everybody else's. So, um, yeah, sovereignty activists, I think she pretty much uh, hit that nail on the head. Uh, that pretty much describes them all. Um, extremists, almost, to the uh, sense of, um, yeah, of it. She's also got her own Facebook page too. But this is an amazing story. I haven't finished um, absorbing it all yet because it's just been mind-blowing, the, especially the way that she's, she's pieced it all together and confirmed so many things for me. She starts off right at the beginning because she knows everything that's been going on and how everyone's tied together. And what what the court wouldn't listen to as proof. I mean, she's putting in here that allows for other people to connect things together. That hopefully these pyramid. Uh, I'm going to finish them off, and I'm going to take this information to someone, and I'm going to get them to take action on it because seriously, these guys need to be shut down and put in jail. You know, there's no more mucking around. This has been going on for way, way too long and it has affected way too many people. And if they're not shut down and permanently shut down, they will keep coming back like a bad penny and doing what is mentioned in here about phoenixing. And funnily enough, the Queensland Federal Court case about Wollumbin Horizon saying the very thing is how can a company appear to have bought a business that it sold to itself even though it was supposed to be in re receivership? How could the receiver allow the seller to purchase the property? I mean, that's kind of redundant, isn't it? And it is kind of redundant because 
see the part I've got highlighted here? In September 2020, a notice from the receiver, Stephen Starts, which he has mentioned up here in um, Gillian's marvellous journalistic work, I tell you, it's brilliant. So basically the receivers informed the creditors that the, um, the auction that went through in June over here with little um, Gunham, that uh, the $2 million price that it was sold for, he hasn't been able to come up with the money. He has been unable to complete the sale. So that would have been that it would have been sold at auction and as usual two months to um, settle before it all goes through. And he hasn't come up with the money, so they've said, right, you want to still hold the sale, give us another 100000 and you've got till October the 19th to come up with the rest of the money or that's it, you've blown it. Now, Mark McMurtry, as confirmed by Gillian, has actually been on this land before and this is why he's, my um, interpretation of why he said reacquired, um, that's because he did reacquire it, they, he was on it. So, you know, all of these things are confirming about the behaviour that you can witness in other people. And I, you know, if, if it teaches anybody anything, it's that if you observe people and instead of dismissing that, well, that doesn't sound quite right, but you know, you, you just ignore it, don't ignore it. Pay attention to it and ask why it doesn't sound right because there's something there that you should have listened to. You shouldn't have dismissed it. Now, if you think about it and you go, well, yeah, it might mean something, but I don't know enough yet. Just accept that. That'll just sit there in that little file in the back of your brain. Something one day will come along and bang it a boom. Those two things will come together and it will mean something. So don't you know, dismiss those little, you know, oh, you know, I'm overreacting or, you know, I, I shouldn't be thinking that or, you know, that's that's ridiculous to think because, um, you know, if I had thought that, I wouldn't have been able to to say what I've said and the risk being ridiculed for being wrong because uh, it actually appears that I am not wrong. I am... I mean, all these other tabs up here are issues that have been going on for years. Nobody likes what's been going on at the Nightcap Village development. They don't like the people in the community. They don't like what they've done with it. They certainly don't want them in their community. And they've turned the beautiful agricultural land. They've ruined it. So, um, yeah, they're not very happy. But anyway, so I couldn't find... Um, documentation as far as articles not that um, newspaper ones are going to confirm it I trust uh, Gillian Norman's reporting here to be far more accurate because she is way up to date she is updating this information you can see here this is September 19th she's updated this because on September the 17th the Tweed Shire Council not only rejected putting the roads in because without the roads you can't develop the houses but it also refused any further application now it doesn't matter what name they try and stick it under they cannot develop it because essentially this is um, it's reserve land it cannot be developed and this is why um, Going back to Peter Lies Out, <laughs> Van Lies Out, this guy here that I've mentioned, like the four different owners of all the property involved in the whole venture. Now, as I'd said before, that all of these try, tie back to a trust as well. And um, this Peter, I'm just going to call him Peter Van Lies Out or Peter Lies Out because that's what he is to me. But uh, Gillian tells us on this page here that P 
Peter lies out um, wanted this development he was getting all this op opposition but the council weren't knocking back the um, development application and do you know why his wife was the mayor yeah you can't believe that can you I mean you can't make this shit up you know <laughs> The reason, the only reason that so much grief has continued on and on and on is because that when this whole thing started way back, you know, in the last decade, that this guy's wife was the mayor and was supporting the development when everybody else said no. In the end, they, the councillors kicked her out and said it's conflict of interest. And she's going, no, 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 you know, just because he's my husband. It's like, yeah, at least they did something smart eventually. But still, um, <laughs> you cannot credit that this whole set of one thing after another over the years of one scam after another scam of trying to set up a tax-free avoidance system. That's what they're trying to do. That's the ultimate aim. Sovereignty is the cover. You know, anybody thinks that they're doing it for the sake of the um, tribe and reclaiming anything like that. It's a sales pitch makes them sound like they're actually doing it for the good when really they're only doing it for the profit and the way they keep going to try and make money. So ultimately anyone that has bought in to this community up until this point, you cannot ever build on it, ever. It's not a matter of Oh, you know, they may approve it one day. No. The only reason it was ever up for application was because of a guy's wife who was the mayor who tried to argue it in some other way that pulled it out of the reserve status that it was under. And ultimately, the council is not going to change their mind. They will not accept any more applications you know it's like do not waste our time we have ruled on this once and for all nobody ever is going to be able to build on that land so if you forked over two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars to build your on your two point seven five acres <laughs> I can think of a Nickelback song right now that uh, is titled Kiss It Goodbye. Yep. People need to do more research before they fork over so much money, especially to good salesmen. Seriously, the better something sounds to you, the more you should actually question it because salesmen are good con men they actually know what you want to hear and it's sort of like um, someone singing a baby a lullaby to sleep they lull you into trusting and accepting this story don't do it you know now more than ever you have got to be a little bit more in charge of your own thoughts stand firm you know don't let other people sway you. Even if a thousand people come against you and you're the only person saying it. Trust me, I know that. I spent my whole life in that situation. Look at it this way. A thousand people telling a lie will never make it a truth. It doesn't matter what those thousand people think. It matters what you think. And if you know what you know, it doesn't matter how many lies are told. And you see, this is where even, as I said, the fact of them suing Gillian Norman over this, they had something to hide. Because really, if you are above board, you don't mind 
people you know opening up your books and saying look this is me I'm open and honest so this is just um, basically bringing <laughs> advice to anyone that has actually bought into the uh, nightcap on Minjimbo if you forked over any money as I said you've lost it if you're considering it I hope you do find this because I dare say that no matter what has gone on up until this point if you sent through an inquiry they will still sell you lots under the same guise and they'll come up with something in the future that you know to tell you after you've bought in we didn't know I'm sorry you don't accept that you get angry you go to go to the the courts to do something about it and bang it a boom you've found out exactly what I've been trying to warn people about okay so if you have been done by this now if you've lost money you need to start coming um, go to either Linda's um, blog spot I'll leave her links down underneath and seriously if anyone thinks of trolling her you know you're just a dick and this is also um, her Facebook I dare say she's used to trolls anyway she's been dealing with the the best of them and a lot of them face to face I dare say too I'd say she's a pretty gutsy lady I, I guarantee you she's she's fronted up face to face and a little thing that Max Egan might like to know too is I told her um, all the details about where you live too and what I think about that in my message to her and also for the fact that uh, maybe it's time to do a birth, death and marriages and find out who the real person is behind this fake character and start holding that real person accountable for what they're saying and doing leading people down a garden path and oh isn't that just a little bit of karmic payback I was wondering why um, he was looking so glum after getting his way into the community and you know he would finally brought in enough people to earn his lot and oh shit can never build there bummer no wonder his videos were so glum it wasn't me it was the fact that after all that he's never ever going to be able to get his 2.75 acres he's brought all those people in forked over they've forked over all this money to buy in and he's wound up with something he can't even build his cabin on and live in and <laughs> karmic payback that's called mate karmic payback I'm glad because I've seen and others would have seen the change in attitude of Max Egan where he says oh I don't know what to say and blah 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 it's like yeah he's really trying to push it even though he does his best still to push all the fear and everything through it he's kind of lost his you know oomph in it a bit you know and the last couple of ones are, are like that oh, two or three and now you know why because his nightcap dream turned into a nightcap nightmare too and I shouldn't be saying that like a smart ass but you know I'm saying this because there are still people out there that you're going to fork over money they're still going to take it because it's going to take time before it ends up in court and before everything falls apart and you cannot prove once it gets paid over you're stuffed even if you haven't moved in there you're stuffed you've lost your money and you'll never get anything in return for it 
and you just you've got conned but look on the bright side you're not the first let's hope this will be the last time that these people ever get to not only to destroy the land but to destroy the whole area I mean I lived in this area and maybe this is why I'm a little angry because there is something about Wollumbin and see anyone that I don't call it Mount Warning I call it Wollumbin because that's what it is it's like this this big heart of something there's this energy there and even one night when I was staying closer to Yukai in one of my moves around in various places in the tents this really bizarre thing happened this night and I wasn't the only one that saw it this night there was a lightning storm well there was lightning but there was no storm and there was a cloud but the cloud was kind of not there and it was covering something and the lightning that was coming out of the sky wasn't coming down it was actually shooting sideways horizontal out I mean we're standing there we're all looking at this and going I have never seen lightning not like that before and I even um, videoed it and I took photographs of it uh, and I even looked back at it and it's like no you know look seriously I know this sounds crazy but um, I swear there was some kind of a firefight going on between some kind of aircraft above Wollumbin. It's um, even like the fact is that how many times I mean I don't see lightning in a clear sky you know it, it and just in a little pocket where there's no thunder or well there was rumblings that went along with the light coming out but they weren't like thunder rumblings and because of how close I was to it so and and that was and in the same place this wasn't at the Ganyawe community this was as I said closer to Yukai along Chow and Creek Road there was another night we were sitting outside on the veranda and again others witnessed it it's really quiet dead quiet and then all of a sudden you hear this and it was really really loud again if I was to describe the sound it would have sounded like the Starship Enterprise was just hovering above us this is how the sound came out of it the the, the size of it although probably not that big I don't know it's only a model anyway so it's not really that big anyway but if it was a real craft well, I suppose there are real craft out there like that anyway but I'll get off the UFOs now and I'll get back onto this beautiful country because I can well understand that there are so many people that are living in harmony with the land there and this community is like a thorn in the side of everybody it is um, souring the beauty of the place their energy is not a good energy and they have been bringing that negative bad I own this you stay out you have to buy into this and you've got to you know if you've got to have the same mindset or you're not invited and it's gonna cost you heaps of money and I'm gonna get really really rich I'm going to be a multi-millionaire and I don't and yeah and I'll sit back and I'll still make all this money because the way we've set it up is that we'll have all the businesses coming back to it too because they're all got to come down too that they, they can't stand all the businesses that are operating that are connected to it have got to be pulled down they've got to be dismantled so that this area can be left alone and restored to how it is because it is find real Aboriginals they'll tell you it is 
sacred land with an energy that these dickheads have got no connection to. The only connection they've got to is, seriously, anyone's been to Nimbin and met Rodney. He's the one that goes round on the street begging for money and, you know, steals things and does all that kind of stuff just so he can, you know, get drunk or high or whatever. This is what they're doing in these areas. And they're so bloody happy that you've got idiots that are going to come along onto your land and buy into it and give you all their money so that now they don't have to go and beg on the streets for it. Now, I'm not saying that of Dean. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that of Rodney and Nimbin. Yeah, everybody knows Rodney, don't they? Low life. Anyway, let's uh, move along because I don't want to make this a long one. As it seems, Julia Norman and I have the uh, same opinion of Max Egan. And I think it's time that we brought Max Egan's real name out. See how he objects to that. Living in a nightmare, failed community broke. Look at that, mum, dad and four kids. And look at how Gunham is doing right now. Yeah, he looks poor hard done by, doesn't he? Sacred land. Look like they just dragged you out of the pub after you woke up in the gutter. So, um, it's a really interesting read, this. It actually does piece together a lot of the things that I've actually said. It's uh, taking them from... And it's actually adding to a lot of the things too. Uh, it's actually correcting me on some things, you know. I mean, there's only so much with what you've got that you can surmise by and come to a conclusion that is logical so um, yeah as I said I'll leave links for these and um, just hang on a sec in my past videos I said I was going to go for a ride on my 748 in the Corumban Valley and there was a point to that and um, I forgot to do it and then I was going to do another video to show you how to do a property search and other things kept coming up and I kept forgetting to tell you so basically that um, you know how I've got all these um, ones over here that I put in a web page and I put the link uh, on previous videos to the archive where it's all there so you can go through and check these records yourself I will actually go in and upload it another one because I've actually added more to it that is linking more in because essentially what I want to do is put all the players in one place and everything that's tied together and then just start sifting through it but um, the addresses that were involved with not only um, well, it was the Crow House that led me to Gunham and then, uh, well, the property sales. <laughs> 3222 Kyogle Road. Well, that was bought for $2 million in June. See, we're here, 19th of June. Um, that, as I showed before, has fallen through. He's not come up with the money. And the fact that he can't actually uh, get council approval ever to build houses on there, do you think he's going to fork over $2 million for the land now? Or do you think he's going to default on the new deadline and the sale's going to fall through and 3222 is going to come up for sale again? And again, it will be a receiver's auction. And one of these other boys will try and 
bring out a company face and come up with the money and buy it then. And then they'll blame others because, you know, like Gillian Norman had done all this horrible stuff to them and caused all these other people grief. Well, it's about time these guys really knew the meaning of the grief that they've been causing other people instead of ripping them off. I won't be happy until they're in jail. And, you know, any of you Max Egan fans and other community members that have come and left your delightful little comments and then deleted them and said, oh, I'm going to go and tell Max what you're saying about me, about you, about him. Good. Go tell them. Because I'm not the only one that's coming after them. We're all going to get together and we're going to bring this bloody big pyramid scam down. Put some people in jail where they bloody well belong. But anyway, I'm going to show you the search. Now, remember how in the video that I did, as I said, there was a reason I was talking about my... Not my 748, but I pretend I was on a 748 Ducati because, you know, 748, I could pull up somewhere on Google Maps and look over and go, oh, wow, what a coincidence. And then have a picture of, you know, like a crow on a house with a scarecrow and a particular logo and go, wow, that's a coincidence. And do a little bit of a, you know, smart-ass little joke about, Hi! You know, as I'm going along Corumban Creek Road and I pulled up there and I waved. But, you know, then I thought, no, there's a better way to do that. Because, um, see, you can't endanger people by going on to a property search at the council, I mean, for crying out loud. So just to ensure, oh yeah, unavailable, great. Hang on. Sorry about that, there's two parts to the council website and one is only open at certain times. So let's plug in, this is the Gold Coast City Council, 748. Oops. Well, oh. we'll go to Pacific Parade, Corumban, and have a look at that. Hang on, I'll pause it while it's coming up. Okay, that's 748 Pacific Parade, Corumban. Well, I kind of knew anyway, but... I'm just searching through anyway because, you know, if I was looking for a particular area, this one doesn't match it. I mean, the area I'm looking for has to have a large stand of palm trees. It's got to have a curvy road going into it. It's got to have a balcony on um, a, a deck on the roof in a pos particular position to the front of the house. It's got to have another building behind that is garage. It's got to have an, a hexagonal one to the side, sort of like this one here that I've heard is like a maloka or malocala shape. And there's another little building that I'm looking for that would be beside that. This this picture doesn't match up. Other classifying features about it too would be um, that I'm looking for something that would be on this side, not a road, but a stand of trees that is fairly tall, but there's light coming through. So there's an empty paddock on the other side or low bush or I'm assuming it would be a field. So if I was finding someone and I was looking for particular characteristics like that. I mean, clearly, this doesn't fit the bill, does it? I mean, it doesn't have the palm trees. It doesn't have the curvy driveway. It doesn't have the deck on the the 
on the roof. It doesn't have a garage up behind. It doesn't have the two side buildings. It doesn't have the sta you know the stand of trees that you can see through on that particular side. So you know the whole thing just it wouldn't be the place I'm looking for. Well, I hope I haven't endangered the people at 748 Pacific Parade because I bought this up in a video. Please, this is a public search. Do not, you know, go around harassing people or endangering people by looking this up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a smart-ass bitch sometimes. All right, let's go back. That one's not the search. I'll just pause it while it goes back because it's slow. So we're back at uh, the main page. We'll have a look at the next one. Ah, Carrara, Narang Broad Beach Road. Yes, I've been along, along that one. They've got nice markets at the Carrara Market. Well, they used to. Hmm. That doesn't look very rural, does it? But then again, I'm not actually looking for any particular place to find any particular one. I'm just showing you how to use... Um, the Gold Coast City Council plans or any other council plans to locate um, a property and its position in the rest of the Shire or council area that you, you may be in or looking at to research. You may be looking at approaching the owner and saying, do you want to, you know, you might like that particular spot and say, would you like to sell it? I mean, these are all standard searches that people do. So clearly, not that place. If I was looking for a rural place anyway. I'll just pause again. Okay. Save the best for last. Even though it's the first, I mean, what point would I be making if I went there first? <laughs> What could I get to say to you in between that you could pick up on that we're just having a look around on council plans and different things? Oh, wow. That's a nice little spot, isn't it? That's a lovely area. It's a pity the other side isn't up because uh, that brings much better things up. Oh, I love those trees. Oh, look, all those palm trees there. Very distinctive, aren't they? Hmm. I wonder what that is on the front of that house there. That's an interesting looking thing. They must be uh, solar panels. I don't know, maybe there's a bit of a garden there. Oh, what's that? That looks like a building shape there and a little one there and here's this other building up here well if I was looking for somewhere that might look a little bit like it oh look and look at that beautiful trees it's a pity that they're only a thin stand of trees and that you could see the light through and it wasn't a really dark forest on the other side but a cleared paddock. Hmm. I wonder what else is publicly available about this property. Let's have a look. Now I'm hoping this is the right site. Yep. This just brings up general council information. All this stuff here is just general stuff. This isn't even a picture of the property itself. As you can see, there's a pretty picture. It just gives you all the rules and regulations that you've got to follow with council for everything that you've got to do. But the other website that's down that uh, said, sorry, we're down, that's the part where I was going to show you where you search the, um, like you get uh, the registered plan number 
and you go in and you search a registered plan number to see what kind of applications have been put into the council, whether they've been approved or disapproved, because this is all public information. So if you were searching anyone in your area, um, or you in any other area, you need to go to where this information is publicly available. And the council's not the only place. In Australia, the Electoral Roll Office holds the uh, home address of most Australian citizens that are registered to vote. Unless you have a very good reason, uh, like you are under you know, a threat or violent, of violence or something like that, that uh, they will withhold your address. But uh, every single Australian is fully searchable on the electoral roll. So it is all um, accessible publicly. Some for free, like you can do here, and some you've got to go into the office and fork over money for. So that was that place in um, Queensland that if I was going to find a place that that's how I'd find a place. And uh, just hang on, I'll bring up New South Wales now. Now the formatting of the different councils is different. So, um, yeah, it, uh, sorry, I should have done this before I put it back on. This is the property in question that um, Mark McMurtry supposedly bought in June but hasn't come up with the money and will undoubtedly default on. And this clicks you on information. There is another part that, um, like both websites, um, will take you on to, um, as, yeah, well, it's brought it up now, see the, the planning information. They are formatted a little bit differently, but um, this one, no applications recorded. Well, no wonder. Now I have gone through with the um, all those addresses in New South Wales and I've checked them out under the various uh, addresses, followed through the um, applications and yes the only application I've been able to come across is where they've been put in for permission to get roads done into the place and I thought I had actually missed the whole development application for the community but the t community itself cannot go ahead until the road infrastructure is in. You see it when they develop any subdivision they first have to put in all the infrastructure before they can even look at um, putting houses on it or getting approval for it. Sealed roads, water, you know, electricity. And what, um, what Shane had said in his message back was that it was because of the roads and the fire hazard um, risks that... Um, were the largest concerns about why it was knocked back. So I dare say that there are multiple reasons. And I mean, and the least of them being that, the most of them being the repetitive nature of this type of scheme going on, people losing money, can't prove it, and I dare say the council has probably had their fair share of people go in and complain directly to them about it too. And they've said, well, there's nothing we can do. And when um, the guy's wife is the mayor, yeah, what can you do? Well, I think I've just about covered everything tonight that, um, well, today... Um, that I wanted to say. I mean, <laughs> you know, most of these things I do over a recording, I have some idea in mind about what I'm going to do, but this all just came up and I thought, you know what, 
this is something that really needs to go out there to people to let them know that look this whole nightcap village enterprise is fallen through and it's never ever going to get approval again where did uh, Linda's site go to oh there's that place again I think there might be is that a crow no that's not a crow sitting on the house <laughs> sorry I amuse myself sometimes I think people know the point I'm getting at. And anyone else that doesn't get the point, well, <laughs> you're never going to get it anyway. It's like, um, yeah, where is it? Council are also resolved that no further application by Nightcap Rural Land Sharing Communities for development approval would be t permitted. And the interesting thing is too that um, I actually found this as a, um, oh, it was either a trust or an incorporated association, but it's been deregistered. So a deregistered company has um, been told it cannot put in any further permits and yet it was already deregistered long before the 17th of September. Why did council even not rule on the fact that you're not even a valid legitimate entity and actually report them to ATSIC? for not being a valid legal entity and for even putting in an application and presenting up as being something than, other than what they are. I mean, ultimately, a con, a scam, a scheme. Whatever name you want to put on it. As I say, I hope... I hope at least one person has saved some money out there and has heard what I've said and changed their mind. And if anybody else is out there listening to this, if you want to take my videos and upload them to your own sites, look, this is why I upload everything as CC. There's no copyright on it, you know, you can take it and do with it what you want. Even if you wanted to turn it into a bag me video, you know, go for it. I don't care. You know, information is for sharing. And uh, ultimately, I give what I give to be shared. So if you want to take it, share it around, do whatever you want with it, you know. It's completely up to you. I'm just putting it out there so that people can know and you know like in the supermarket the other day when I didn't stand in the spot and someone just naturally didn't follow being a sheep but was kind of like a sheep behind me and the fact that they stood behind me but at least they were not going for well this is how you've been told to do it it's just like no I'm going with this person over here you know and little by little we're all just slipping back into normalcy although here in Hobart in Tasmania I can say that not much has really changed it, it didn't and anything that did happen happened in nursing homes up uh, Burnie up north of Tasmania and there was nothing really here in Hobart so basically the whole community sort of been you know in winter mode anyway so it's sort of not like one of those things that's going to be a bit much of a bother but it is starting to come into summer now and I did do a video before and it turned out to be a really long one and I didn't upload it I don't know how long this one is but I'm going to say this anyway in past videos when I'd said about um, that something was going to happen in September the exact opposite I think is going to happen um, that rather than escalate things more in some places yes 
because they are shifting laws around because there is more down the track. But before there is more down the track, they are going to, a lot of Australia is going to ease back on the restrictions and people are going to start getting back to more normalcy like what we are in Hobart here. I don't know how m m normal Victoria will be allowed to get back to before things start to happen. But let's just say that I believe that it is in the interests of a six month um, worldwide uh, drill and now the information and countries have gathered data and everything like that that now it's time to pull back on that a bit because um, yes too many people are waking up everything is starting to get too bad so pull back a bit people will then start to slip back into the normal and yes there's something about this year's fire season um, I don't know what it is but it's they need more people out in the general community more and not so much restricted in lockdowns for the summer for when the drill that was run this year and what they learnt from it that it will be implemented not this particular drill but what they've learnt from this will be implemented into the real scenario that will happen. And if you think about it, it is actually called Agenda 21, not Agenda 20. Agenda 20 is the drill. Agenda 21 is, um, well, kind of like the year of achievement that will then lay the foundation for the year of 2030 to be achieved. But what is going to be achieved in 2030 cannot be achieved until Agenda 21 is achieved. And remember, it's Agenda 20, I mean Agenda 21, not Agenda 20. And it's called Agenda 21 because it's 2021 they're talking about. And we all know, anyone that knows about Agenda 21 knows that this has been in development worldwide for many years, decades. Supported by councils, local government, state government, federal government, countries worldwide. It's been the quiet achiever in the new world order structure. So, yes, I've just thrown it in there that take advantage of this time. If you're in Australia, and we're coming up to Australia, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going into winter, um, I don't foresee that your circumstances are going to ease up because you're going into winter and more into a natural hibernation mode during winter, they will probably put you in more. This is why I'm saying and Australia will be used as a test case in other ways. So yeah, we need to have I think the citizens be released from captivity a little bit more over summer to get them to spread out for, for whatever Agenda 21 needs to culminate in 2021. The drill the six-month drill, the worldwide drill, is done now. All right, they're closing it out, up. They're making laws that will further the Agenda 21. Okay? So, yeah, I think I've pretty much said it over and over again. I can't say it again, can I? <laughs> Australians just... Um, take advantage of when things do happen to get out there in your community and learn what it was like to be like before mobile phones before the internet when people actually talk to each other when 
you sat down and had conversations that nobody else participated in and there was no technology to listen to you unless they wanted to beam in a satellite and I don't know some special kind of spy gadget to eavesdrop on you what well, you're nobodies yeah you're just people meeting up friends gathering together of like mind that are smart enough to realize that we will be given an eye before the storm and that we should take advantage of that we will be given time and those of us that will be given time we need to take advantage of that for those that are going to be going into the extremes of it and uh, the northern hemisphere I think um, especially Europe UK and places like that are going to experience it more and maybe even Canada because of the extreme weather climate it's actually going to well are there any homeless to kill but I mean there's going to be a lot more people that after this year of this whole fiasco people are weakened and vulnerable and an extremely cold winter and lengthened days of extreme cold that in itself see half the battle of agenda 21 is not going to be obvious it's geoengineering it's in the weather it's in the deniable natural supposedly natural weather events like the fires that happened this year that even though they you know <laughs> say it's arsonists and they're deliberately lit there's still this concept of well you know it's only um, teenage kids mucking around or arsonists you know of course there's no other motive for deliberately lighting it or it's someone throwing a cigarette out the window but cigarettes have got all those chemicals in them now to actually not make them continue burning for that very reason so can't blame them so yes all these things about um, global warming and everything all these natural events that are manipulated to create the scenarios that further weaken a community so you know you need to if you're in the northern hemisphere really consider about handling the cold weather extremes this year I know that you're probably already gearing up for it anyway but there could be cut off from an already limited food supply yeah, I'm probably sure you already know that it's just that you know I do worry about the northern hemisphere going into the winter cycle because it it is a natural thing for human beings during winter to go into that hibernating mode you know to stay more inside so it's actually easier especially when you're snowed in to actually keep people in and under those circumstances a lot of things can change I mean Victoria wasn't snowed in and look how they changed things there especially laws and they're doing it in Australia all over the place in different states they're doing it in countries all over the world and yes you need to keep an eye out on what's going on that you can see in other countries and let other people know in case they can't see because their own country is stopping them from letting them know what's going on it's actually really hard to find out what's going on in your own country so yes let's help each other out go out into the community and start talking to people and don't be afraid that people are going to you know turn around and make fun of you or call you names or anything I think you'd be more worried about what's going to happen if you don't start taking advantage of the eye in the storm if you get it if you're going to be one of the ones that is lucky enough to get it anyway I think I've said it all I'm going to leave it at that it's probably about two hours long anyway <laughs> sorry about that catch you later